It's so nice to be here with you today. So nice to be here with you to pray. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Won't you please, won't you please, please, won't you pray for your neighbor? Welcome, welcome, welcome to this very special 4th of July episode of Father Ralph's Neighborhood. I'm Father Ralph Swern, currently serving as the uh, Dean of uh, Vicariate 6D and the Associate Pastor of a newly forming parish, uh, the parish of Saints Joseph, Anne, and Emmerich. That's our temporary name, uh, but we will be uh, uh, working toward uh, choosing a, a, a new name for the new parish. Uh, I keep pushing for St. Rita Moreno, uh, but I understand that one of the qualifications is that you have to, well, be dead, and I don't wish that on her. She's such a great, she's she's one of the people that she, she won an Oscar, she won a Tony, she won a Grammy, she, she won, you know, very talented. So why not? Why not St. Rita Moreno? Or maybe St. Vincent Price. I don't know what we're going to come up with, but we'll certainly let you know uh, when it happens. Pray for our pray for our newly forming parish. Pray for the three parish families uh, that are coming together uh, to create this, this new parish to continue the work of our Lord. And uh, I like to call it the South Pole of the Archdiocese of Chicago. I was going to do this episode last night but uh, I couldn't uh, I think my next door neighbors and they're wonderful neighbors they really are but I think they were shooting their fireworks into my backyard right outside these two windows these two windows face uh, as a corner of the backyard of my home here uh, in, in beautiful Worth Illinois and uh, you know uh it was like uh, it was like we were filming Saving Private Ryan or something in here last night. It was just pow, 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 pow. So I said, you know, better to wait for the morning when everyone's so tired from exploding their money in the thin air uh, that they're asleep and uh, and we can do the recording without the uh, without the appropriate combat uh, uh, sound effects. So. Forgive me for being late, but as they say, uh, better late than ever. In addition to being the 4th of July weekend, uh, this is already the 14th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our gospel this weekend is the Gospel of St. Luke. We're reading from uh, chapter 10. If you're reading along with us, uh, we're going to do verses 1 through 12. Then we're going to skip to verse 17, and we're going to read verses 17 to 20. At that time, the Lord appointed 72 others, whom he sent ahead of him in pairs, to every town and place he intended to visit. He said to them, the harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. So ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest. Go on your way. Behold, I am sending you like lambs among wolves. Carry no money bag, no sack, no sandals. Greet no one along the way. Into whatever house you enter, first say, peace to this household. If a peaceful person lives there, your peace will come to rest upon him. But if not, it will return to you. Stay in the same house, eat and drink what is offered to you, for the laborer deserves his payment. 
Do not move about from one house to another. Whatever town you enter and they welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick in it and say to them, the kingdom of God is at hand for you. Whatever town you enter and they do not receive, go out into the streets and say, the dust of your town that clings to our feet, even that we shake off against you. Yet know this, the kingdom of God is at hand. I tell you, it will be more tolerable for Sodom on that day than for that town. So the 72 returned, rejoicing, and they said, Lord, even the demons are subject to us because of your name. Jesus said, I have observed Satan fall like lightning from the sky. Behold, I have given you the power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and upon the full force of the enemy, and nothing will harm you. And nevertheless, do not rejoice because the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice because your names are written in heaven. The Gospel of our Lord. So my transition from being a pastor to once again uh, being an associate pastor has gone remarkably well. I got to admit, uh, when everything took effect on the 1st of July, yeah, I was a little bit eh, melancholy, I guess, because, you know, you have that feeling like there's so much more I could have done. You know, I, I just wasn't finished. It, it wasn't, I wasn't ready. And, uh, you know, uh, the Japanese have a wonderful philosophy of life. It's called wabi-sabi. And the three pillars, the three tenets of wabi-sabi, nothing is ever finished. Nothing is ever perfect. And nothing lasts forever. So I wound up just kind of reflecting a little bit on, on those three pillars of Wabi Sabi. And yeah, Ralph, you could have been given how many more years you still wouldn't be done. No matter how many times you tried to, to redo things, still wouldn't be perfect. And, uh, you know, nothing lasts forever. So you have to take the gift of the day and, and, and treasure it, uh, uh, you know, as I said last weekend, you know, we, we listen to the music of the past so that we can sing in the present and dance our way into the future. On Friday, I had the remarkable grace of celebrating a Misa de Quince Años. Now, you may say, well, you do that all the time, but this was, this was the eye opener for me. Uh, as I looked out over that family, I said, you know, it's not about being in charge, as you've preached so many times, Ralphie, boy, it's not about being in charge. It's about being in love. And as long as I continue to love and serve uh, the people, you know, uh, of the parish, uh, that's all. That's all that matters. And this was a particularly neat uh, Quinceano celebration because it had to be canceled because of all of the restrictions that the pandemic placed upon our church. Uh, so in the process of waiting, the younger sister caught up to the older sister. And instead of having two separate masses, they decided 
to combine their mass together. And so I had this, this beautiful setting with these two wonderful girls, Daisy and Jeanette. Oh, oh, they were wonderful. And I have to tell you, I don't know where they where they found these dresses. These dresses were so poofed out on the bottom. We have a very wide middle aisle. And I love it because it's so wide that when the little kids come to church, they can run around in it and enjoy themselves and everything. Believe it or not, their dresses were so big that they could not come down the aisle side by side. <laughs> You know, they had to come, and then when they got to the front, their padrinos had to kind of rearrange the furniture because uh, the kneelers were so close together that no one would be able to get through the dresses uh, to come up for a communion and everything. So once uh, once we got settled, once we got settled, thank God for the music from the choral that was there from uh, St. Uh, uh, well, it's now St. Mary Magdalene Parish. Uh, uh, well, I'll tell you, uh, they played some, uh, what do you say, play some rearranging the furniture music. And once they got settled in, it was just, oh, so beautiful. One problem. As I looked out at these two wonderful girls on what is a day that they've been waiting for, such a special day in their lives, they looked absolutely terrified you know and I'm like oh this shouldn't be they should their faces should be lit up they should be smiling they should be happy this is a very joy-filled occasion and we read this gospel for the at that point it was for the coming Sunday but this gospel that we just read and I said wow isn't that the Holy Spirit Ralph telling you what to tell these girls because you know, here they are two by two right jesus sent the disciples two by two and so that's what you've got to tell them the lord is sending you both together and i asked them i said so girls what's the first thing you're going to do after this celebration in church you're gonna go out those doors and what are you gonna do and they kind of looked at each other like oh what's the right answer you know and i said you're gonna party you're gonna party you're gonna have a great time with all of your family with all of your friends you're gonna celebrate right well it hadn't dawned on me that that was a big part of what we were about there. Uh, it wasn't just the being in church. It was taking what we were doing in church and bringing that joy and that love of our Lord into the lives of our family, our friends. Uh, the very first letter Pope Francis wrote uh, to us when he was made Pope. It's a little bit of a long letter, uh, but if you haven't read it yet, I really encourage you to read it. And if, even if you have read it, read it over again. You know, the title of the letter, The Joy of the Gospel. And he wrote to us to tell us, you know what? If you're really believers, if you really believe in our Lord, your life should be filled with the joy of his gospel. And that joy is something, it's a gift you can give, right? Um, think about it. The first miracle Jesus worked, it wasn't, you know, at, at the synagogue or some, you know, stuffy meeting or service or something. Where was he when he worked his first miracle? He was at a party! He was with his disciples with his mom, they were at a wedding for a couple they loved and everyone singing and dancing. Well, you know, thank God this doesn't happen anymore. 
But in those days, when the wine ran out, so did the guests, right? And the wine ran out. Mary was the first one who noticed, and she didn't want to see everybody leave. She didn't want that celebration of love to end prematurely. And so she went to Jesus and told him. So what was the where of the first miracle was a party? And the what? The first miracle Jesus worked was to turn all of these huge gallons and gallons of water into wine. And it wasn't just any old wine. Uh, the steward said it was the best wine he had ever tasted. And so the party continued. I would imagine it went on for days and nothing could have made our Lord happier because that meant that that celebration of love was not going to end. And that's what he wants for us. He wants that celebration of love to continue. And I told the girls, you invited your family to this table, this altar, so that we could continue that celebration of love. Here we are nearly 2,000 years later, and the wine still hasn't run out. What was the occasion for Jesus' last supper, right? It was at the celebration of the Passover dinner. And again, you know, you look at these paintings like Michelangelo, everybody in that painting, they looked like they were just having such a great time, right? They're like, right? Uh, I mean, poor, uh, one of the guys looks like he got stuck with the bill. That's the expression on his face. That's not what it was like. Passover was a celebration. And they sang, and they danced, and they, oh. So Jesus knew exactly what he was doing when he took that chalice, right? It was filled with wine. He didn't have to turn it into wine. But what he did with it was remarkable. He said, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood he changed the wine into his very blood so that as it was passed around and everyone drank everyone was filled with the joy the peace and the love of our lord the wine hadn't run out and two thousand years later when we come to church and we receive the body and blood of Christ, we recognize that great gift. The wine has not run out. Our celebration of love goes on and on. The gist of this gospel is that these 72 disciples were sent out and it's like, who, us? You want us to work miracles? You want us to cure the sick? You want us to drive out evil? You want, how are we going to do that? And they found out, you know, all you got to do is bring that gift of our Lord's love into the lives of everyone you meet. And that love itself, that love in and of itself will work miracles so our lord sends us not alone sends us together two by two and it doesn't have to be two by two i mean if you know you could have three people you have four people the point is you you don't do this alone you do this together right you go out together filled with the gift of the eucharist filled with the gift of love, the wine hasn't run out. You bring that celebration of love 
into the lives of those who need the gift of that love the most. So there's your homework. It's 4th of July, right? Uh, some of you may actually be having a, a, a glass of wine or two today. Think about that when you pick up that glass and think to yourself, it's the first miracle Jesus worked. This is what Jesus used at the Last Supper. This is Jesus' prayer for all of us, that the wine will never run out, and that we'll always be able to bring that gift of his love and his joy, the joy of the gospel, as the Pope has taught us, into the lives of those who need it the most. And when we do, we will work miracles together. Jesus says at the very last line in today's gospel, but don't you be rejoicing because you were able to work these miracles, but realize and rejoice knowing that because you are bringing that joy of the gospel into the lives of those around you, your names are written in heaven. So we rejoice. We rejoice that we can make sure that the wine never runs out, that we can bring that gift of love into each other's lives every moment of every day. Good Lord willing, and the Crick Don't Rise will be with you again next weekend. Until then, we pray that the Lord will send his angels to watch over you, to protect you, to guard you, and to guide you in all of your ways. That he will fill you with the power of his most Holy Spirit. That indeed, you can bring the joy of the gospel into the lives of those who need that love and joy the most. As our Holy Father says, we shouldn't go around with faces that look like pickled prunes. We should smile. So smile. Bring the joy of the gospel into the lives of those you love. May the Lord bless you all and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you, be gracious to you, May he lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. And so now let's get out there and work. Safe.